Well, good morning once again. Now, I recently did a video on completing a rough turn bowl, and that's something that is uh, pretty basic to wood turning, and I covered all the different procedures and steps that I do when I reverse a bowl. Now, I got a really good comment here from Wolf, and he said, I Sam, question from a previous video. How do you reverse chuck a hollow form to prevent splitting the wood. Anyway, that's the topic for today. Completing a hollow form and dealing with the foot. How do I reverse chuck a piece like this? Let me show you some of the pieces. These are a few of the pieces that I've got sitting in boxes. And uh, what I've been working on specifically so let me show you what a hollow form looks like when I start to complete it in the final process. Let me see, let's look at this one here. Um, this hollow form, I can remember it, oh my gosh, uh, 2017 is the date on the bottom of that, so that gives you an idea how long these have been sitting around. Is it dry? Yeah, I think so. But it's got some absolutely spectacular grain from here all the way around <laughs> and it ends right there. So there's a little bit of straight grain wood. Now, this is still fairly thick. It's rough turned. I rough turn everything anymore. And I need to put this back on the lathe and true it up. So that's kind of the next step. Uh, the tenon really is quite large. I don't need that big of a tenon on there. So what I may do is reduce the size of that that will complement the final shape as I go into that tenon spigot area. Okay. I can put that between centers. I can put it in in a scroll chuck. The next step after I get that all trued up and everything. Let's see what else uh, is a good example. Well, right here. This, this particular little hollow form. And I leave these kind of thick down here so I can work on the shape later on. But this has an insert in it. And this is the one of the, this is one of the hollow forms that I have sitting here that I don't really have a lid for. So I've, I've got my insert glued in there. And the next step is to, um, put a lid on and a finial of some sort. So let me see, I've got some that I've completed. Uh, this is near completion and actually this is a, a good example. Yeah, I like those colors, pretty, pretty crazy. Okay, I always keep that spigot on there so I can check it up. But I need to true up this area. There's a little bit of a shoulder right there that I use to line up my insert. Okay, and I've got videos on that. But anyway, um, I glue the insert in there like I just showed you. I'm getting out of, out of sequence a little bit. Let's take a look at this one here. Now, this one is still really thick and I've got some ideas on what to do with this. Um, nice black wood handle. I call this a handle. It's not really a finial. And these are all threaded in there. Gives me a chance and a reason to thread chase. All right. And this particular lid has a, a 12 TPI thread in it. A little texturing on the, on the top. And I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll match that color with what I put in here. Okay, so that's ready to get serious with the shape. I need to do some coloring on this. All right, and, I, and I'm going to do that on that particular one. Um, here's a little bit smaller one. And, and these are kind of fun uh, to work on shape. You can, uh, you can kind of experiment with the shape and design on that. And, and obviously the very bottom of this is way, way too big. I need to reduce the size of that spigot. All right, and that's always kind of the last thing I do. All right, let me, let me show you. Here's one that's ready to take off this tenon. 
Okay, and again, that's the focus for today. Now I've got a cast acrylic lid on this, okay? It's, a, it's an acrylic rod, and you want to get the cast, you don't want to get extruded. All right, so again, threads on there. I did a little bit of texturing on the very bottom, and I sanded this lid to 12,000 grit, and you can actually see the texturing through the top of the lid as you look down through there. Okay, that's, you know, a little bit different. And what I decided to do with these is do something a little bit different. I didn't want to do a, a you know, a real pointy kind of finial on these. I wanted to kind of play around with more of a handle. All right, and this is all ready to go. I'll have to pick one of these. What I do, and I'll, I'll kind of jump to that, and uh, what I will do later on the lathe, I've got a, a setup like this. I've got a little bit of carpet underlayment on the bottom of that, and that goes all the way down and sits on the bottom, right there, okay? It impinges on the bottom. And then this little collar, which is movable, and I can, um, I got a, move one of these nuts down there. So I put that in. This is between centers, remember? So that goes into the, the lid of the hollow form. So I've got a connection on the very bottom and on the rim right here. And I just take these, these nuts and move them down, put this bolt into uh, some pin jaws. And I'll show you that. That's the main event. All right, so. I may pick that one, that's a pretty good example right there. Um, here's another one. And now this one here, this has a, a lignum vitae lid on it, all right? And I know what you're gonna say, why do you have all those layers of threads? Well, you know what, they're free, so I, <laughs> I don't know. I can always take off a couple layers. Um, I like the coloring on this. There's always something that you, you kind of question, but that's all colored, that's ready to finish. I've got a coat or two of shellac on there. So let's go over to a lathe and actually do something. And I'll show you how I finish a hollow form and take the tenon or the spigot off the bottom. And that's the final step. Now at the very end of this video, I'm gonna show you how I turn this threaded lid handle. And that'll be kind of bonus footage at the very end. Okay, I finally made it over to the lathe. And let me show you my setup for reversing a hollow form. This is one that I've got right here. And this actually has a face plate on the bottom of it here. This one actually has a face plate on this end. I've got this wooden collar that fits into the opening of my vessel. And I've also got uh, right here, it's, it's a little stop collar with an Allen wrench and I can uh, lock that in when I put that on my lathe. Now let me show you my setup that I usually use. Let me back this off just a little bit. Now this is one of the hollow forms I showed earlier and it's all completed. Uh, I do need to apply some more finish, probably spray shellac, but I can do that later. I have very carefully measured the bottom inside of my vessel, okay? So I'm gonna take all this away and then it'll be completed. Now, I have chucked up some pin jaws and I've got a threaded rod right here. And I know what you're thinking. It's like, okay, you're gonna damage the, the inside of your jaws. Well, maybe, I don't know. I'm not too worried about that. So we'll, we'll kind of lock that in, spin it. That looks, that looks pretty good. So what I have on here, I've got this little wooden collar. 
that will fit in the opening of my vessel right here. On the end of this, I've got a little bit of carpet underlayment just to kind of uh, fit in the inside bottom. And I've got two nuts right here. So this goes on. So right now I can feel the bottom of that where the uh, threaded rod is. I'm going to bring up my tail center. And I've got a center on the bottom of my little vessel here, which is helpful. I'll bring that up. And I'm going to just rotate it just a little bit. That looks spot on. Put a little bit more pressure on that. I brought you in just a little bit closer here. So right now, I need to lock this in. It's still not quite where I want it to be. The bottom inside where that threaded rod is, is pretty secure. But I need to add the top wooden collar here. So I'm going to take the first nut right there, kind of lock that in. Now the reason for the second nut is to lock them all together so they don't uh, loosen up. So I'll just take a couple of wrenches here. I don't need to add a lot of pressure on that. That's going to be just fine. Let's turn it on real slow. It's a little bit out of balance, okay? But this is all right down here. This is what I need to deal with. Okay, now all I have to do is deal with this little area down here, this tenon slash spigot. Now this may be the shortest part of this whole video because everything else is pretty much ready to go except a little finish on there so I need to to pick a, a gouge that will work. This is a little, little quarter inch bowl gouge. Nope, this is a little quarter inch spindle gouge which should work. So let's turn it on. All right, now I'm going to take a narrow parting tool and I'm going to just cut in right here at the very bottom of my vessel. The last thing I want to happen is for my gouge to skip back and uh, make a mess of the, the finished piece right there. So turn my lathe on. I'm turning right at 800 RPM, and that's probably plenty fast. Maybe in this camera right here in front of me, I'm going to point to the inside bottom of my vessel. It's about right here. So I probably have a, a strong quarter of an inch or more because I don't want to go through the bottom of that. So I'm going to go back to my little spindle gouge and just hog off a lot of this wood right here. Let me, let me mention something while I'm thinking about it. The reason I want pressure on the very bottom inside of my vessel and the top of that is for stability and if something happens, this is never going to come off the lathe. All right, it's just never going to come off and it's, it's just a very secure way to fix this. All right.
Now I'm going to go to a little bit bigger spindle gouge. Work this down a little faster. Now, it's not going to take much to take that little nub off down there, all right? So I want the base of this to be concave. I want that to be undercut just a little bit. And I'll do a little bit more work with this small detail gouge. This is a Cindy Drozda detail gouge. It's sold by Packard. Uh, love this tool. I've got a couple of them in my shop and they're really nice. Alright. Clean up that outside edge down there. Make one more push cut. Right there. And I'm going to just whittle off, I'm going to just whittle away some of this wood right here. Now I'm taking a very small little parting tool and I'm going to just go down a little bit farther and then I'm probably going to cut that off of the saw just to show you the safest best way to do this. Now, I don't want to have an accident here and I'm still turning at uh, 650 or so. I'm going to turn that speed down just a little bit. saw. What, what can happen here is this little uh, area right there where my live center is pressing up can split and you can see a little bit of a split right there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of sandpaper just a little bit and touch that up. Yeah, I can do a little bit more sanding later on on my drill press. This is what it's all about right here. Just, just cut her off. And I like these little saws. If I bend this like this, I'm trying to not damage this little rim right here. So uh, I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to go down just a little ways, rotate my pot. I'm going to keep doing this until I, I finally cut through on that. Yep, I'm, I'm good. And I'll be able to see that little bit of wood loosen up. Right there. Okay. This may be the end of the video. I'm not sure what else I can do. I need to do a little bit of touch-up work right down in here. It's got a little, a little line that I don't like, so Back off my tail center, right there, there it is. 
All right, so there's the bottom. A little bit more sanding on my drill press. And it'll fit just fine. All right, now in part of this video, uh, towards the end, I'm gonna show you how I made this lid right here. It's lignum vitae, threaded in there, and originally the shape was a little different. Okay, I did a little bit of profiling on that because I didn't like it all that much, so she's complete. Okay, there's my little uh, hollow form. And the next thing, if you want to stay tuned, you can see how I made this. Uh, not a lot of thread chasing, a little bit. So thank you for tuning in. This really isn't complicated. If you, if you have the right kind of fixture, you can make one of these out of uh, a dowel or a threaded rod. Anyway, I've also got videos on that process. I'll put a link up in the description. So anyway, share my videos, like them, please leave a comment. I like to hear from you what I can do better with my videos. I don't know. I can get this threaded on there. <laughs> All right. There it is, and I'll talk to you next time, so thank you. Well, I'd like to take you through my process for creating a lid on one of my hollow forms. The hollow form I'm working with is box elder. It's been colored, and it's very close to being finished. Earlier, I removed the tenon on the bottom of that. I have an insert in the top of the hollow form right there and uh, a male threaded bit of wood that's going to become a little bit of a handle. I wouldn't call it a finial exactly. So I'm going to just uh, put that into my lathe and what I've got right here actually is what is to become a screw chuck. It's like a jam chuck with threads. It's a piece of bubinga and I'm going to carefully mark the number one jaw if I happen to take that out. Now this was in my wood bin. I have a, a couple little drawers full of these and this one actually fit perfectly. I just had to face off the uh, the flat spot right there, which is very important. And that ensures that everything lines up. So I'm forming a chamfer, and now I am creating a recess or a stop gap. These are really easy to do, and they're kind of fun to do, because if you mess them up, it's not a big deal. This is not going to be part of the actual uh, project. So I'm chasing my female thread on my screw chuck. I just happened to record the speed. It was a little over 22 seconds, and I got that all all finished in short order. I didn't have to mess around with it very much. It fit perfectly the first time. That doesn't happen very often. Uh, well, I'll take it. Yes, it is. Better to be lucky than good. And anyway, so I'm going to work on the lid. I've got it threaded into my screw chuck and I'm going to bring up the tail center just for a little added support and, and this uh, kind of guarantees that I can uh, go through this procedure without it messing up my threads or bouncing across the floor. I just showed you my remote switch and I bring that a little closer I've got a little Robert Sorby gouge, and this is kind of fun to use sometimes. It doesn't take off a lot of wood, which forces you to be a little bit more 
careful about removing too much wood. I'm facing off the very top of that just to make sure it's trued up. Here I'm hogging off some wood with a skew chisel in a peeling cut. Now I'm going to go to a spindle gouge right here and uh, start getting serious about the shape. Put it back into the hollow form just to see the proportions and I think it's uh, pretty good. It's not too long. I have just enough wood to turn that down and complete my handle. Now I'm dealing with the very bottom part of that uh, lidded handle. You can't see that very well, but I need to kind of finish that off before I get to the thin part. This lignum vitae takes a beautiful cut. It's just amazing. I hardly had to do any sanding later on. I think I started with six or eight hundred grit. It was that good. Lignum is a little bit of a greasy wood. Maybe it doesn't take a lot of finishing at the very end. Uh, there's a good shot of my skew chisel. Now I get in there pretty well with that very acute uh, angle on that skew chisel. Here I'm taking off a little bit of the the jam chuck so I can get in there a little bit better. There's no better tool to use than a, a good sharp skew chisel. Leaves a very very nice surface. Now here I'm using my vortex tool. It's got a very sharp angle and it gets way down into that uh, crevice down there and also leaves a, just a beautiful finish as well. This is actually a detail gouge where the flute has been completely removed. It's uh, actually a scraper. This is a little quarter inch gouge pretty sure it's a bowl gouge and I like that. Here here I'm looking at a crack right on the top of that. I didn't notice that before so uh, that forces me to change the design of this little handle. I'm just kind of taking off some of that uh, end that has the crack in it. Now something else I do is I completely changed the very bottom of this design. And I showed that earlier in the video, the first part of the video, because I just didn't like that. The very bottom of that just kind of straight and doesn't have much shape to it. Now I'm getting serious. I'm, I'm down to what I would consider the final shape of that very top of that. Make some detail with a little gouge. There it is. I think I jumped ahead a little bit, did a little bit of sanding and put a finish on there and the, the wood is just gorgeous. And there we are. Let's put that into the hollow form. Again, I changed the shape of that, that lid detail a little bit. I know I have way too many threads on there. There we go.